Hello, everyone. I'm Shruti Kumtekar, Marketing Manager at Close. Thank you for joining us in our Close monthly webinar. Today, we'll be discussing HRST, what's new in London. I'm going to take a couple of minutes to go through housekeeping, talk about Close, followed by the presentation, and finally, Q&A. This webinar will be recorded, and you will be able to access it later. For Q&A, you're on mute. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A section in your Zoom control panel and our panelists will answer them. If you have any questions that are not directly related to the webinar, please email me at shruti at closing.com or sales at closing.com. Our social media channels are listed here and you can access our previous webinars at our Close YouTube channel. A little about Close. We are a ServiceNow partner since 2011 and based out of Santa Clara, very close to the ServiceNow headquarters. We are a full ServiceNow shop with 250 plus customers, 400 plus implementations, and we've been executing projects globally. We provide end-to-end -end services. Our focus has been on CSM, end-user portals, and HRSD. Our panelist today is Sova. Uh, Sova, thank you for joining us. I will stop sharing at this point. Some of the features and functionalities, not every single one of them, but just uh, some highlights of what's new in the London release. Um, so we're gonna get to talk about things that are new within the case and knowledge management um, area, things like auto case categorization, knowledge blocks, enhancements uh, to case creation and enhancements to the case transfer. On the portal side, the employee service center side, um, some things that are new are, is the content automation, also known as campaigns. Uh, for HR service delivery. Um, talk a little bit about the org chart enhancement. There's a org chart widget that's part of the portal that was enhanced. Um, get into a little bit about the virtual agent. There's a new virtual agent um, uh, widget and functionality that comes with the uh, employee service center. And then enhancements to HR case view. Um, there's out of the box widgets for um, how to view a case and how it's tied to HR tasks and things like that. Um, and brand new in London is the employee document management. Employee document management is a way to centralize uh, employee documents, either attachments from specific HR cases or manually entered. We talk about some of the retention policies and how to configure those, um, the purging of uh, those documents, applying any um, legal holds on these documents so they cannot be purged, um, how do we set security policies on those documents, and showing you a little bit of the employee access dashboard, uh, employee access and the dashboard for, for um, administrators to be able to um, administer all the documents in the system. So we'll start with case and knowledge management and some of the functionality that has been um, released with London. So with case and knowledge management, one of the things that has been released is the auto case categorization using machine learning. Um, machine learning is another term that is used um, for um, agent intelligence. So agent intelligence is uh, a plugin that can be installed. So the problem has been um, when users would email cases into ServiceNow, um, they're generally tagged as a general inquiry case, and the agent then has to go in and and have it put a step in there to either transfer the case to the right service, or to change the category, or even to change the service, and put it in the right COE. So a solution for that. Um, is to build upon um, the agent intelligence platform and to be able to automate the creation of those email cases in the appropriate HR service and in the appropriate COE. Uh, and that's based on historical data. I won't get into um, all of the agent intelligence platform um, based on, on this webinar, but um, really all it takes is to install the plugin and um, uh, load 
the agent intelligence with uh, all your historical data. Um, from there, then you configure the inbound action uh, so that we can auto categorize these cases. Uh, so for this one, it's, uh, we're looking at knowledge blocks. So the problem has been um, with HR specifically, um, there's knowledge articles and content that are very specific to different audience types. Um, so the problem has been, you, we would have to create multiple articles um, and um, tag it so that they can be read uh, by different by different audiences, with knowledge blocks, um, this solves it. What it does, it creates blocks of content that you can um, tag, so that um, the that content will only be displayed to the target audience that uh, that it relates to. So these blocks are then reusable, so that identical content can be created um, and then used in multiple articles if needed. Um, the articles then hide or display those block contents based on based on the user's either HR profile or user profile. Um, any of those things can can be attached so that these knowledge knowledge blocks um, can work. So, case creation. Um, Previously in Kingston, um, it was introduced that the HR case creation page, your able, agents are easily, uh, there's a sp special page that agents can easily create cases, um, either from a telephone call or via an email from an employee. Well, these case creation pages didn't allow you to specify custom fields on there that is needed for the actual case. Um, so specific information was being left out on the case creation page. And then once the case was created, the agent had to go into the case and then, and then add that information again. So the solution is um, you are able now to configure these case, case details, these custom fields or additional fields on the case creation page itself. So uh, admins can guide their agents to collect all the information that's needed to create and fulfill the case. So basically, um, this section that is highlighted in the screenshot basically just gives the, the agent that's filling out this case um, more details to fill in if, if those details are known to help fulfill the case. Another feature and functionality was when cases were transferred from one COE to another. Um, you know, employees are confused because now they're given two case numbers that they need to track. Um, they're unsure why the original case was closed. If they want to make updates to the original case, those updates weren't being um, captured in the new case that it was transferred to. So in Kingston, a bi-directional link uh, on the agent UI was, uh, was allowed to make it clear to the agent where the case was transferred to or from. Um, also in Kingston, the link from the cancel case to the new case was a part of the portal. In London, uh, was advanced a little bit more where a single notification is then sent to the user when a case is transferred instead of two emails, a canceled email and then a new opened email. And then in London, any replies to the original case, even if it's canceled, will be added as a communication to the new case. And the screenshot in particular shows that there's, a, there's this history link um, on, the, on the employee portal where they can see the history from the two cases. And it's easy, clearly easily to see that this case has been transferred to the new case. Let's talk a little bit about the features and functionality that are new in the Employee Service Center. In the Employee Service Center, um, 
commun communicating with employees um, is oftentimes difficult when you want to send mass emails. Um, you don't know exactly which email addresses to, to send to, uh, which users to send to. Um, and relying on emails and mass emails creates sort of spam for the employees. Um, key information only applies to some, but not all. And distrib distribution lists, email distribution lists are sometimes often outdated. So the solution to this is the targeted content, which also known as campaigns. So targeted content enables HR, communication teams, and other departments to create relevant email, uh, portal content, uh, target certain users, and schedule delivery timing. So you can create a campaign for things like uh, open enrollment or onboarding. Uh, content within this campaign can vary based on who the recipient is. Um, when you're using user, user criteria or HR criteria, th those can be leveraged so that you can target these uh, campaigns with, with using those um, options. So <clears throat> more about campaigns, it's, you know, for example, open enrollment can be a campaign. Open enrollment can be a campaign that you only release to US employees, um, new hires their first year, any sort of company announcements that may only pertain to a certain region, uh, case deflection, education, um, and promotion of resources available. So let's say there's uh, you want to promote uh, your your HR tier, um, or things like that. You want to spotlight your HR organization. You can do that with campaigns. So with London, there are new new service portal widgets that enable. The, the most use of this content delivery. So you can set visibility based on dates and or audiences. Um, like I said, audience criteria can be set using HR, user or system data, and those criteria can, can be reused. Uh, this is a screenshot about the updated org chart uh, widget that comes with uh, London. Um, so what it does, it improves the usability of um, easy to click new uh, profiles. You can see new cart animations and it's an improved sizing. So really this whole widget for the profile has been revamped uh, for London. So for the next thing we're gonna talk about um, virtual agent. So employees need a quick and easy way to find information. So um, if you're leveraging uh, the connect support chat, um, this builds on that. So virtual agent um, provides a simple and effective automated and conversational way to answer employee questions. So in London uh, comes pre-built with four delivered conversations. These conversations are like agent topics and they're, they're pre-built um, and included within London. Uh, the, four, the four that comes within London are the leave of absence, pay discrepancy, update profile, and general HR inquiry. Uh, conversations um, can be added to by HR admins. Um, so more conversations can get built. But think of conversations as more of a, a uh, more of a, like a recipe, a conversation recipe that you're going to, to build and deliver to your employees. Um, customers can edit delivered topics and also create additional ones. Um, and it may be used independent of service centers in channels such as Slack and MST, MS Teams, et cetera. So this virtual agent, um, also known as chat bots, things like that, um, it's now being lever leveraged in the London release. So this is an improved uh, view of, uh, of the case view. So the, the HR case widget 
that comes delivered within London is improved. So what it does, it provides more consistent details of parent and child relationships of cases. So if there's, um, you know, if you're leveraging the parent and child relationship within the case, um, th there's an improved view of it on a single pane. And then in addition to that, use of consistent patterns to display this information so it's easy for the user to navigate and find information. So there's, we're highlighting these um, few links above here um, that give the employee much more control and much more functionality um, to their cases. And brand new in the, uh, with London is the employee document management. So employee document management uh, really is a solution where employee documents are scattered across multiple HR systems. Um, you know, they can be held in the SharePoint system or in your HCM system like Workday, et cetera. Um, but there's no centralized place for it. Uh, to locate. And it's difficult when HR has to locate and manage these documents, there's no central place for them to look it up. So with employee document management, um, files from cases can be automatically added to their, um, to an employee's uh, document system. Um, you can search for these documents um, easily. Um, using metadata tags. Um, HR can also uh, put legal holds, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, on documents for an employee. You can also define who has access to which document. There may be some um, client uh, employee documents that you don't want the employee to access, and uh, you, can, you can set those things. So with employee document management, uh, we're relying on retention. And retention um, varies by the document. It also varies by uh, the employee's attributes, such as region or when they were hired, um, things like that. And proper retention of these um, are needed for regulatory compliance and may even protect the company from uh, litigations. So managing the retentions um, is, is key and it's very time consuming if, if there isn't a system in place. So with employee document management, um, we can configure these retention policies um, and configure how, how long we need to retain these documents. So we can configure different retention policies for, like I said, the document types we can also specify multiple retention policies within a document type based on, let's say, a user's um, location. Uh, the example here is that for US employees, um, we'll retain a document uh, based on the employee's termination date plus seven years. And, but for UK employees, we do that for the termination date plus five years instead of seven. So these retention policies are very flexible um, based on the document type. Now we're talking about, this one is about, this functionality is about purging documents. So purging documents is required for businesses for efficiency as well as compliance with laws. So purging documents manually can be time consuming um, and may be prone to error. So the solution with employee document management is it gives you the ability to automatically purge documents based on their retention policies that we saw earlier. You can configure certain types of documents um, that if a purge is going to happen, that there is an authorization or at least a notification um, that gets sent out. Uh, you can configure the purge notification interval. Um, so you can configure it to purge, like for example, every week or every month or, or every year, things like that. 
and it also gives the user ability to put documents on purge hold if they need to review it further. Um, so this is purging only as it relates to the employee um, document management, not in terms of um, HR cases and, and other types of data. This is, uh, so we talked a little bit about legal hold. So um, the problem here is, you know, it's important that certain documents um, relevant to a user, um, certain documents uh, relevant to some sort of litigation, um, it's, it's not purged. So, so there needs to be a way to, to pause that purge. And to do this, you apply a legal hold to a document so that if a purge has happened, it'll skip the document types or all documents for a specific user that have a legal hold on them. So under security policy, right? So employee documents, some uh, majority of them contain sensitive and personal data. So it's important to restrict the access to these documents. Um, these documents are held in the system. Um, so depending on the user permissions in the system, you may or may not have access to it. Um, but with the employee document management, um, there comes a, a feature that you can apply security policies um, to configure who can read or write, um, have read or write access to documents. Um, to do that, you apply a security policy and then HR can control access to that document based on the document type using the security policy. So this is employee access. And um, you know, in most organizations, you're going to allow your employees access to their documents, documents that they have signed. Um, but there are certain types of documents that you may not want the employee to be able to see, but you want it to be a part of their file. So that's where you can configure whether or not a document type is available to the employee or not. So access to these documents um, can be enabled by the type of document it is. Um, if it's enabled, the employee can then log into the, the employee uh, service portal and view all of their documents without having to contact HR for it. All right, so that's the end of my slides. I'm gonna show you um, three demos. So I'm gonna demo, show you how to configure knowledge blocks. Then we're gonna talk about uh, campaigns. And then we'll get into configuring and looking at the employee document management application. And finally, after that, uh, I will probably say 15 minutes at the end of this webinar for any um, Q&A that you guys have. Switch to... Instance now. Okay, so let's talk about knowledge blocks. So the first thing to do to configure knowledge blocks is to activate the plugin. So the specific plugin that we're going to install is called knowledge blocks. I've already, I've already activated in my instance. Um, one thing to note with the knowledge blocks configuration um, plugin, it also installs the knowledge advanced installer as a, a prerequisite. 
Now, if you didn't know, the Knowledge Advanced Installer um, plugin includes uh, what's also known as knowledge versioning. Um, knowledge blocks, to utilize knowledge blocks, you, it does not require knowledge versioning uh, to be enabled. And you can easily disable the, the versioning from the knowledge uh, properties. So if you go to knowledge uh, properties, Down below here, you can disable knowledge versioning. All the way down here. All right, so you can disable or enable, but just know that when you install the Knowledge Blocks plugin, it does install the Knowledge Advanced Management plugin and that comes with knowledge versioning. So if you're not ready to use the versioning system, uh, you can disable that before you start to configure your knowledge blocks. So to configure your knowledge blocks, there's a new sub application under, under knowledge and there's a couple of things um, here to note. So you can create a new knowledge block. You can look at unpublished knowledge blocks you can look at published knowledge blocks, retired, and all knowledge blocks. The thing to note, and what I like to consider, look at knowledge blocks is think of them as mini knowledge articles, mini snippets of a knowledge article. So it, it has sort of the same workflow, right? That you would have, you have to publish a knowledge block first in order to use it. So when you're configuring a knowledge block, um, similar to a knowledge article, you have categories, you have the published, you have who can read this knowledge block, and you have a valid to time when this knowledge block is valid into. So then you have your knowledge text that's here. All right, so what you want to include as a text in your knowledge block, and then whether or not any approvals are, are needed to get this knowledge article into a published state. So once it's in a published state, um, there's a related list of what, which articles that this knowledge block applies to. So you can easily see where this specific block that you created has been used. In order to activate the knowledge block, you have to add it to your knowledge basis. So not every knowledge base has to use knowledge blocks. So if you want it to use uh, knowledge blocks in your specific knowledge base, you have to enable it via the knowledge base uh, configuration. As you see here, knowledge blocks is enabled and it is read only. The reasoning why it's read only and you can't uncheck it is because you have knowledge articles in, in this knowledge base that is utilizing knowledge blocks. So you would have to remove all the knowledge blocks from your articles before you can uncheck this enable knowledge block. Let's show an example. Let's look up an, a knowledge article that is utilizing knowledge blocks. So here I pulled up a, a knowledge article called New Hire Checklist. The New Hire Checklist, um, if we go into the configuration of this article, it's utilizing numerous knowledge blocks. So this one actually uses 12 knowledge blocks that are part of this knowledge article. To preview this, you would click on the preview articles with blocks. And right now it's listing all the blocks on the right hand side. You'll see all the blocks that's being utilized within this knowledge article.
if you wanted to view this article as a different user and see what the article would look like as a different user, you would just select another user. I'm going to select Gail. So now I'm viewing the knowledge article as Gail. And you'll see on the right hand side here, which blocks are available to Gail based on her, on her attributes. So you'll see uh, the complete form I-9 block is available to her, but the hourly employee knowledge block is not, since she is not a, knowledge, uh, a US hourly employee. So this is a quick way for you to test how your knowledge article utilizing the knowledge blocks can be seen by other users. Going back to the knowledge article record, um, you can easily remove a knowledge block from an article. Let's say I didn't want the hiring manager training knowledge block. I simply just come to this block and delete it and save the knowledge article. If I wanted to add new blocks, I just click this new, add new blocks. Um, right. I just add new blocks, search for the knowledge block that I want. Um, let's say I wanted to add the hiring manager toolkit. Okay. So let's say I wanted to insert that into the article. So now Scroll down here. Now it's inserted into my article. Right, right below workplace setup. And just uh, update the article and that our knowledge block is now a part of the article. So with knowledge blocks, it is a more efficient way for articles that span different, different audiences to be set up so that not the, your knowledge management team only has to maintain one article um, for your entire uh, organization and cut down on the number of articles that, that needs to be reviewed and maintained um, on an ongoing basis. The next demo we'll talk about is um, content delivery, um, also known as campaign. So, to get started with content delivery, um, there is a content delivery plugin. Right. So once you activate the content delivery plugin, um, that's step one. To fully automate it, there is another plugin called autom Content Automation. and you need to activate this also. When you activate the content delivery plugin, uh, there's a brand new application that gets installed called content delivery. And a couple, couple key things is you have your portal content. These are uh, content items that are delivered on your service portal that you can utilize. There's notification content. Let's say, for example, you wanted to configure uh, different notifications for specific content. Link content. These are links on your service portal that you may want to target based on some of your campaigns. This is where you would come and configure your audiences, right? So audiences is an, 
is needed and it leverages users or HR criteria or user criteria. So for example, active users does a query into um, the user table and checks where all users are active. You can also leverage an HR criteria such as California employees is an HR criteria and then you scroll through your available HR criteria that you can use here. You can also leverage user criteria. So for example, content admin and manager is usually utilizing uh, the user criteria settings, configurations that you have in your system. After configuring audiences, then you can configure uh, and your schedule of content. So for example, um, let's say you only want to show this uh, banner, this welcome banner, right? This at a specific time. You would come and configure that in the availability start date and, and when you want that information to be, to stop being visible. So you have the title of the content, the actual content, the page that the content is delivered in, and what widget instance that the content is being used. You can configure different content types. Um, so think of content types as uh, two different categories, the portal content and the notification content and then the associated widgets that you want to utilize with that content type. So like, for, so exa for example, uh, a banner content type is a portal content um, and the widget we want to use is this welcome banner widget for content delivery. For ease of use, so content delivery starter portal, this is, uh, once you install the content delivery um, plugin, it gives you a, a sample portal so that you can test and see what your content type and your campaigns will, would eventually look like uh, on a service portal. So out of the box, when you activate, it configures and creates this sample content delivery demo portal for you so that you can start to work and configure your campaigns and your content delivery and see what it looks like on a, on a specific portal. And then once you're um, happy with what it looks like, then you can move and configure the same widgets onto your existing service portal. Be it the portal as HR, you can also use it for um, IT portals, um, etc. So these widgets can be utilized across the platform. So finally, the last demo I wanted to show you is the brand new employee document management. As always, there's a plugin that needs to be activated. Uh, the employee document management. Uh, so this is the plugin that will need to be installed. When you do install in that, it is its own scoped application. So you know if you go to your application uh, picker, you'll notice there is the employee document management application. And It's listed under HR administration employee documents. So this is where you would come in and configure your, your document management system. So the first thing you would wanna do is uh, see what documents are out there. So 
you can easily search documents who the employee is tied to. Um, so this is my demo system. There's seven documents in the system. If I wanted to create a new document, I can. I can choose a file, set a description, assign it to an employee, um, assign it the document type. Whether or not it relates to a case, um, this is not a required field. Like I said, you can manually upload documents for an employee. And then whether or not you want to add a purge hold to it, to that document. So I've already uploaded one called Portal Lab Text, and the document type is NDA, and I've assigned it to Mara Reinhardt. No cases needed because I manually uploaded this document. These do with document management, these can be automatically added to the system from specific HR cases. I'll show you how to, um, how to set that up. When you're designing your documents, the first thing you should do is identify what document types you have. Um, so, for example, we have employee verifications, right? It's tied to a topic detail of employee verifications. It's a part of the HR operations topic category. And the COE is workforce administration. So basically what it's saying is all all cases where um, it's in this topic detail, that this, if the document matches this type, it'll automatically get added to the document management system. Document types, opening up a record here, and you'll see the types of retention policies that apply to this document type. Whether or not there's a legal, you want to put a legal hold into this document type and then whether or not you want the employee to be able to access right this document type so out of the box um, with the demo system um, there are about 15 document types already um, that can be configured for you the next thing to configure is um, retention periods. Um, so these are periods of retention based on a certain attribute, a certain date field. You'll notice here that there's a couple different ones already created. Document created plus seven years. So this is, you know, this retention period is seven years after the doc after the document created. So it's using the sys created on, which is um, the HR case. So it says that this period should look at the sys created on date and add seven years after that. You can also create retention periods based on the employee's profile. So for example, this is end date plus five years. That is the employee's profile employment end date plus the five years. Um, you can also have a time that the case was created, all right? So this is when the document's created and this is, you know, the, the date that the case was created. So you only wanna keep, so that in this retention period, it's uh, to retain it for one year after it was created. And then once you have your retention periods, then you would configure your retention policies. And this applies to different document types. So let's say, for example, we're looking at the NDA document type. So under the NDA document type, we have a default retention period of indefinite. And then we have a specific retention period for France employees only right, where it also is indefinite. But we can change that. Let's say, for example, France, uh, the retention period, we want to change it to
let's say for document type NDA and for the criteria of France employees, we want to change the retention period to uh, the user's termination date plus three years. So then we'll just update that. So now for France employees, right, if there's a document of the type NDA in their system, it will get purged after three years of their termination date. You'll notice that there's a default retention policy for each document type, and that is configured via the default retention policies. So this is where you would set based on the table, the COE that the, the case is in, uh, what retention period to automatically apply to those, uh, to those types of documents. So if, the, you know, if you need to change some of these um, so that it's not indefinite, that it's some other retention period, you would just come into the default uh, retention policy and change that. Let's say, for example, we want all HR case documents uh, to be purged after five years. Then that is the base. So if no, poli if no retention policies apply for this document type, then it will use the default. Um, security policies. We mentioned uh, being able to create security policies for certain um, types of documents. So let's create one for NDA. Um, let's say for NDA documents, um, we only want the um, admin to be able to read it and only the admin to be able to write to it. And let's say a purge, authorized purge is required. And let's assign it to the HR admins to be able to purge this. So now we've created a security policy. So anytime uh, the NDA document type is in the system, only person that's able to read that document is the the core admins be able to write as the admins. And if there's a purge happening for this document, then um, HR admins will have to, will have to uh, approve it. So then once we have the security policy, we have to apply it um, to a topic detail. So it's, uh, Find the topic detail for NDA. Uh, let's just pick one, for example. Discrepancy doesn't work. Need to check on that error. So then we applied the security policy to this document type. I'm going to deactivate this because I don't want it to be utilized. And I show you the employee access. So you'll notice that um, when we talk about, we mentioned the dashboards. So this is a dashboard that can be leveraged by your, your document administrators. Um, so your document administrators, in order to utilize this dashboard, there is a plugin, uh, performance analytics plugin um, called 
dashboard. It's not called dashboard, it's called performance. Performance analytics, content pack, human resources. Right, employee document managed, management scoped application. So this, uh, this content pack is what delivers this dashboard. And just quickly to view the dashboard, um, you would look at it under employee documents and your document administrators can view um, these dashboards and any legal holds uh, types of reports. From quickly from an employee's point of view, I'm going to impersonate Mara and show you how an employee can, can view their documents. So under the profile, you scroll all the way down, there's a widget for my documents. Uh, you'll notice that um, there's three documents that Mara has, but if we looked at her, we looked at her configuration under search documents, you'll notice that she does have actually more than four. So, go to search documents and Mara has More, more than four. So she has this portal labs NDA document type. So the reason why she wasn't able to see the NDA document type is because we haven't enabled employee access. Once we do that for that specific document type, and then we go back in as Mara, then you'll notice that she now is able to see her document under profile. There we go. So in summary, um, employee documents is a scoped application. Um, it is brand new in London and it's a very simplified easy way, centralized place that um, employee documents, whether it's from out of the ServiceNow system or manually uploaded, uh, can be used to, to hold the employee's uh, documents over their employment lifecycle. As of that, that concludes the uh, demo portion of the webinar. Shruti, do you have, uh, let's get started with Q&A. Yeah, uh, attendees, if you have any questions, you can use the Q&A section of your Zoom control panel. And uh, so is available here to take the questions. Thank you, Soa. I think that was really informative. We can wait for some questions. Again, as a reminder, you can use the Q&A section under the Zoom control panel if you have any questions. Uh, okay, here we go. So we have a question here. Does the machine learning suggest any category to the users which is suitable while a case is being opened? No, so the machine learning piece of it is only for the inbound action. So it's not going to, um, suggest categories on a on a service portal form. That does it's it's meant for the inbound action for the um, for emails that come in. Okay, thank you, Sora. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions?
see, we'll give it another minute and um, Okay, it seems like we're not getting any other questions at this time, but um, okay, we got one more here. If a case is canceled and transferred to another service personnel, will the user be allowed to edit the new case? If a case is canceled and transferred to another service personnel, would, I assume when you say the user, meaning the employee, yes, the employee has full access to the new case uh as an employee so they can um, add comments if you enable an employee the ability to change information like a like short description or description they can do so okay that was great thank you okay can the employee view the org chart not necessarily in your own unit? Uh, it depends on the permissions you set, um, but usually org charts are public information. So out of the box, I believe you're able to view org charts of the entire organization. And who can publish knowledge blocks? So knowledge blocks, the publishing of it, retains your knowledge base uh, publish workflow and retire workflow. So um, whoever has permissions to publish via the knowledge base will have permission to publish the knowledge blocks. Okay, another question here. Can virtual agent auto create conversations based on most discussed topics? No, virtual agents is different than agent intelligence in that way, meaning that the conversations that you build um, have to be specific. So they would not learn on that. Okay, I think so that's pretty much all the time we have for today. Thank you everyone for joining the webinar and thank you so much, Prova. That was great. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to send an email to sales at closing.com. And thank you once again and uh, see you next month for our next close webinar. Thank you.